What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're changing a siphon on a toilet. And we're changing it from a pull handle to a push button. So let's get into it. This toilet is at a care home. So first things first is we're gonna move the emergency pull cord because I can see myself pulling that by accident. So let's get that out of the way. Now, first thing you need to do is isolate the cold water to the ball valve. Now, this one doesn't actually have an isolation on it and I don't fancy taking all this off so we need to improvise um, we need to basically wedge this up so when I drain the water out with a wet vac it doesn't drop down and start filling again so I think the best thing to do is get some cable ties and then cable tie it up to this and then keep it so it's got tension up so let's do that first all right so we've got this cable tied around the toilet roll holder <laughs> So basically, when I flush this, well, I can't flush it because it's not, the diaphragm's gone. I'm gonna wet back this out. So when I wet back this out, this stays up. It stops the water from coming out. Now, if you were doing this in your house, you'd isolate the, if you've got no internal stopcock, you would isolate in the street and then kill the water for the whole building. But this is a care home. Now, they always need to have running water. So that's not a possibility. It doesn't have an ISO. I can't take this off. So we just gotta tie it up and see if we can do what we need to do by taking this out without having to isolate or take the system off the wall. Um, at least gonna try it first. So now get a wet vac, drain this out, and then we'll go from there. Water's all drained out, ball valve's holding up, which is good. So next thing is to take the flush link off the flush handle. One hand, it might be a bit difficult. Then pop that off, undo this back nut, holding the handle on, and just pop it out, put it out of the way. No longer needed because we're going to put a, a push button that's going to sit here, and it's just a push in, push out instead of a handle. It's easier for the older people that live here. Um, now, take this off. Next thing to do is to undo this flush pipe nut. So we keep unwinding that. There might be a little bit of water here, so don't worry too much. And then undo the nut holding the siphon onto the cistern. Now we've got that nut completely taken off. Now what you need to do is very carefully, because if we knock this ball valve, it's gonna start filling up with water, and that's not very good. So we have water everywhere, so just slowly wiggle it out and it should pop out of position. A little bit of water in there, but we'll get some blue raw and dry that up. What we need to do now is see all this old excess silicon here, get a Stanley knife blade and just slowly, carefully take off all the excess silicon around the edge. So it's got a nice flat surface to sit on when you put the new rubber washer in there to make the seal. All right, so we've got this all cleaned up now, ready to go. We've got the new Fluid Master push button siphon. Now, what I would normally do is, if I've got a little bit of movement, I would take the flush pipe out, replace the flush cone, and then it means basically I can replace this back nut to hold the siphon on. Um, in this case, I don't really want to do too much cutting or moving on this pipe because I don't want to disturb the joint that makes the system connect to the toilet via the flush pipe into the back of here. Um, this nut is exactly the same as the new one that comes with it. It's the same size, same thread, everything. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna put a little bit of silicone around here. We're gonna drop this back in here. So the flush pipe goes into the bottom of the siphon and then the rubber washer meets the bottom of the system and makes a seal with a little bit of silicone just to hold it. And then underneath, tighten this nut up and then I'll show you from there. All right, here we go then. So not too much. This is just clear Dalcorning silicon. Now what we're gonna do is put a little bead around the outside of this. Not too much, but enough just to help it make a seal. Now this is really hard to do with one hand and to try and film it at the same time. Not loads, just enough to basically seal it in case the rubber ever perishes. Just like that, a little bit of move it around a little bit, make sure they've got a nice little spread on there. I mean, to be honest, the rubber will do the sealing, 
when it comes to making the seal on the bottom of the system. So this is just a little safety precaution. It just doesn't feel right to fit one without it. So now we've done that, let's pop it down into the system. All right, here we go then. So make sure you've lined the siphon up with a flush cone and then slot it down so it goes inside and then push it all the way down. And then come underneath. And then you can see the threads back here now. And all you wanna do is back melt back up. What you want to do is push the siphon down so you know it's sitting flush with the bottom and then just do this nut back up, hand tight. What you want to do is just get a little pair of grips on there and then just give it a couple of little turns. Now what you don't want to do is over tighten this because it's a plastic thread on a plastic back nut and sometimes when you over tighten it it will just jump threads and then all of a sudden you won't be able to tighten it up and you'll have to cut basically cut all the flush pipe cut this down and then replace the siphon which you've obviously just bought a new one and then replace the back nut as well because the threads would have basically crossed over and then it just won't tighten up anymore like I was saying, you just want to take your time on this because it easily wants to just cross thread and basically ruin the thread on the plastic. So you just take your time, slowly do it up and if it's not working, undo it and slowly go at it until you can get it on and then tighten it right up. Because this is what makes the seal when the water comes out of the system. You want the rubber to be sitting inside of the siphon so when you tighten it, it makes a nice rubber seal around the bottom of it. Well, this is the easy bit now. So you've got the push button, you want it to be on there, and then you've got the back nut there, and you just want to tighten that back nut on the other side of this so it holds it in position and doesn't just fall out. Again, hand tight. I'm not gonna do it too much, just a couple of little turns, just to basically stop it from spinning or coming loose. Now, what I like about these siphons are that this bit is, twistable so what I like to do is twist it so the cable is as far away from the handle as possible then spin it round and then push this button in and connect it on now now this button is connected to the mechanism inside of here so when you push this it lifts the siphon that you can't see but it's down there lifts it let the water out let go seals it now what you'd normally do now is either turn the isolation to the system back on so you let the water back through or turn the main back on that's inside, uh, sort of the outside of the property so you liven all the water back up. But in this case, I'm gonna cut the cable ties, the ball valve's gonna drop and then the water will start filling up. Moment of truth, cable cutters, I'm gonna cut the cable ties and the ball valve's gonna drop down and start filling. Let's see if we've got any leaks. We should be all good to go. Now the reason this stopped flushing is because there's a diaphragm in this part, in this part in here, a plastic diaphragm. Um, when you pull this up, it makes a suction and pulls the water through and then it pulls it up and over and then flushes. Um, I think the diaphragm's split in this one. Oh, there's not actually a diaphragm in there. <laughs> that probably explains why it wasn't working. So um, yeah, we've got this one changed out over to a push button. Now we're just waiting for it to fill up, make sure it stops at the right level without going over the internal overflow. And I know some of you people are gonna go, oh, why did you not just replace the actual siphon part of this? Um, is because this is not a two part siphon. This is the old school whole siphon. With the new ones, they have a pin that you can pull out and you can change this part without having to take the whole siphon out. Um, now I obviously didn't want to put a handle back in there because it's easy for them just to press the button and with these you can twist them and then pull it out so that's why I didn't put a turbo back in there. Alright so we're ready for a flush now, the system's full up with water and we're going to press this button and we're going to see what happens. Make sure we've got no leaks around here, we're looking good. No water around this nut, but no water at the top, and 
we're all filled up. I was going to end the video here, but I've got a ball valve to change. And just for a laugh, I just want to see how quickly I can change the ball valve from isolating the valve, taking it out, putting the new one in, tying it off, and then turning the water back on. I'm going to see how quickly I can do it. Not bad if you ask me, three minutes, 54 seconds, old one out, new one in, reconnect it back up and tested it. Um, if you did like the video, please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.